Today is Technique Tuesday on my YouTube channel. I'd like to share or learn new techniques every week and share something with you on Tuesday. So today I'm going to be doing cyanotype printing, which is a photographic process of printing that engineers used into the 20th century. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel and of course that notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So let's get started. As I said before, we're going to be experiment, experimenting with cyanotype printing today and I'm utilizing this watercolor paper which is just your basic cold press 140 pound paper. I'm cutting that into sizes that I think that I will utilize. So I'm doing five by seven. I'm going to cut some sizes that will create tags and you know, some larger ones, maybe eight by 10. I'm just doing some, some different sizes. So these are the two chemicals that you will use. I purchased these in a kit. Um, cyanotype printing involves two chemicals, ferric, uh, uh, ammonium, cy ammonium citrate and potassium ferrocyanide. So these are mixed together and when they mix together they activate. So I am putting one capful of the solution A which is the ferric ammonium and one capful of the solution B which is the potassium ferrocyanide and when they're mixed together they create the liquid that you coat your paper with. And you want to keep this out of direct sunlight. Now I am putting this on in my studio, a very uh, cloudy day, and there is no light, direct sunlight coming in from my window. I've blocked off the window in, in my studio. You can do this under incandescent light but you do not want to do it under any type of direct sunlight because that is what activates the process. So you'll see that here in a moment. So the, the one thing that I want to do here is just kind of illustrate how many pieces of paper you can coat with two capfuls of this liquid. So I have cut all of these pieces and you, you're, you're watching me coat them here. It's, it's a ton. And I'm going to make tags and 5x7 prints, and there's some off-size prints here. And I have more than, than I will probably use. So to store those, I have pulled out a black garbage bag. And I will stick these all down inside that black garbage bag. And there I can keep them protected from exposure to any type of light. So you could cut these up and... and um, you know, save them for for the time when you're going to need them. Now, I do not know, and, and I'll look that up and maybe put it in the description, how long you can store them coated. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't thought that far ahead. So I will try to find that. Now, everything that you need to do this process, I will link in my description as well as on my blog post. So you'll be able to find it in two places. So this is everything that I have coated. I'm going to stick those down inside this black garbage bag and we will get back to those a little later. So keep your hands covered when you're doing this and when you're working with those chemicals. Now I have pressed some, just some clippings from my yard into this magazine and I'm arranging them and, and I'm in a, in a dark room now and I am arranging them on top of the on top of the paper that I have coated and I am putting a sheet of glass over the top of them when I get them arranged so I have them sitting on a sturdy magazine I've put the the coated paper on that magazine I've put the glass on top of it and here we go outside on, on my deck, and you can see my other project up there. I'm going to refinish that antique swing, but, but that's another day. And look at the color change on this. I got to go, turning in into the blue. Now, I did two settings 
um, Tommy, my schnauzer, was helping me. I did two settings. I did the first one, or the first um, cyanotype, I did that at three minutes, and my last cyanotype, I took it all the way up to 10. I did not notice a difference in how blue it became. So once you expose it, you want to bring it in again to a dark area to rinse. You don't want to take the leaves off while you're in direct sunlight because what is underneath those leaves will turn if you do that. So bring it in. I've brought it into the kitchen and I am just um, rinsing it off and I do recommend that you wear the gloves. I forgot to put mine back on but I in, in retrospect, my hands should have been covered. There's, you know, no reaction, no, no, you know, nothing. It's just safer when you're working with chemicals to always keep your, keep your skin from being exposed to the chemicals. So I rinse those. We'll let those dry. And I want to do a second print. So let's take these outside. Now look at how they're yellow. The sun hits them right here, and look, they're starting to change already just with that first exposure to the sun. That's why you want to make sure they're secure, make sure they won't move around, and it just goes that fast. And like I told you, I did three minutes, I did a five minute and a seven, I believe, and I did 10. I didn't really see the difference. So you have the magazine, the paper, the floral that you're going to expose and a piece of glass and you're just sandwiching that in and here you have the finished product. This is what we received out of all of those prints and you can see I don't really see any difference. I, I You can't tell the difference between the three minute print and the ten minute print but I do think that if I had to let it go longer than the 10, I probably would have had some degrading. I'm not sure, but that was just my experience. As, as I said, this is the first time I've done it. Now, that star white, I think is beautiful, but I also saved all of those leaves that I printed with. And I think that I would like to create, just cleaning off my gel press here while, while I'm talking, but I, I think I would like to get some veining on these prints. So I'm just matching the leaves up that I used to create the cyanotype. And I am going to pull, pull my gel press out, or I have my gel press out. And I'm just going to stick this cold gray. I think this is a good color that works with the cyanotype. And I am putting the leaves down, getting the veining side down, making sure that I get the ink on those veins, just kind of rubbing my brayer over to smoosh them in to that ink. I'm going to pull them off and lay them into place. And I'm just putting a little pressure with my hands to make sure that ink transfer, or that paint transfers, not the ink, not ink, but paint. I'm making sure that paint transfers. This is cold gray acrylic paint, to be clear, on the gel press. I am getting some pretty decent prints off of this process as well, which I will let dry, set aside, and use in other projects. But this is what I'm going to go through with all of the, the cyanotypes that I have created. I think that veining would look nice in there, and for me, I think that would be great. And as I learn this process more, um, I think that probably some more feathery, uh, more delicate floral would would create a better print, but to work with what I have, this is how I'm going to finish off this project. And look at some of those cool prints we're getting. I don't know if you could see that when when it flew by, but I'll I'll share those with you later, perhaps in another project. So I'm going to continue on and get all of the veining inked up or painted up or coated in paint and lay that veining down and put it onto the cyanotype. So this is what we finished up with. So these are all of the prints. 
and this is how they look after I have that veining down. And I love this blue. I think it's I think it's so pretty. And this little sage. This is where I tried a yellow. Not a fan. Another yellow, yellow ochre, a violet. Not a, I'm just not really liking those. Um, this one is one of my favorites. I do like that stark white one as well. I did leave one stark white. I, I really like this one. I think it turned out nice. So this I think is my favorite, that last one. And here are just the catch papers or the prints that I got cleaning my gel press after I transferred the paint to my leaves. So I think I have some workable images there too. I hope you will try it. So this is, you know, I'm going to share with you just a, a few of, of my personal favorites. My intent is to take these and move them into my studio to work with encaustic medium. So that is why I created them. We shall see what I can create utilizing the wax. And I hope you will come back and join me. And of course, share your projects with me. This is, like I said, I'm learning. This is the first time I've tried it. I think it turned out pretty good. So once again, my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Please take a moment and subscribe and all of your likes benefit me. And I love to see your comments and I do respond to everyone. So please share with me, um, join me, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.